Hey guys, I'm Curve Sam, and this is a 25 essential tips guide for Dying Light 2. This guide is good for new players and day one players alike, so I definitely recommend checking out this video if you're playing Dying Light 2 right now. So real quickly guys, yes, that is a zombie derping out in the background of the video. So yeah, I wanted to thank Gamer for helping capture this footage for the intro. I just, we both realized that there was a zombie bugged out really bad behind me. I will say though, there are some minor spoilers in the guide, but I tried my best to not spoil any of the story. But I do bring up some stuff that is in spoiler territory. So if you're trying to do 100% blind playthrough, I recommend clicking off the video now and coming back to it later. For those of you sticking around, get a drink, get a snack, and sit back while we tackle 25 essential tips for Dying Light 2. Thanks for dropping by, and let's get to it. Tip number one. Buy all the blueprints. Uh, I recommend buying the blueprints because there will be a lot of stuff to learn as you're playing the game. Put a little bit of work into it and you'll figure out what your playstyle is and you know which blueprints you want to upgrade and which ones you feel like don't do enough for you. So that actually leads to tip number two. Once you do get the blueprints and if you've decided to buy the medical kit blueprint, sell your level one med kits. I know that sounds wrong, but trust me, once you have the medical blueprint and you have built some and leveled them up, they are way better than the level one med kits you're given in the story and side missions. Now tip number three is more of a personal preference, but I feel like it's still a, val a valid thing. I like to use the raw damage first and then put mods so I can continue using the weapon long after uh, becomes unusable. So how to quickly repair your weapons, just for those of you who don't know, is if you have bought some of the blueprints, you'll be able to put them on the weapon and it will repair that weapon. It won't repair it all the way, but it might depending on how high the blueprint is or if you do certain things that, that will raise up durability for the weapon. Tip number four is the gear sets. Now this is gonna be completely new. For those of you who played Dying Light 1, there was no such thing of gear sets in the first game. Gear sets are all divided into different categories. I know right here you can see I'm like mix matching a lot of stuff. I would recommend to kind of experiment with your gear sets uh, and what works with you. If you wanna go all single-handed, you can go single-handed. If you like to be a ranged person, you can do range. If you like to take a lot of damage and be like a tank if you're playing co-op, you wanna be the one that soaks up damage while everyone else does damage, you can be a tank. Uh, it's a lot of stuff you can do. So the game really, really expands on Dying Light 1. Tip number five, always check the rooftops for honey and flowers. If you took the advice I gave you guys about crafting your own med kits, these things will be your best friend because you're going to desperately need these supplies while you're exploring the map. It will make your life a whole bunch easier. And another thing that's so great about this uh, little area is there will always be a weapon presence. If it's not in a shed, it'll either be on a stump, a tree stump, or nearby. So always check beehives so you can craft your healing supplies on the go and not have to worry. Tip number six, take over the windmills and then at the top of the windmills, use your binos, your binoculars and look around the map. This will reveal activities, side missions, dark zones and everything else that you will need to do while you're playing the game. If those of you who play Far Cry, you probably are used to this by now, so it's probably second nature, but this is kind of new to Dying Light, so I wanted to help you guys out and not have to worry about running around and trying to check every corner of the map and making sure you can get everything done. All right, guys, tip number seven. So if you're on your map, look at the bottom right-hand corner and you see the two numbers there, the one in dash two, that is the level cap for the area you're currently in. You might be having a hard time in a certain area because the level is higher than you are currently. Now, that doesn't mean you should stay away from that area entirely, just means that you're gonna have to spend a bit more time trying to figure out how to approach it rather than just having a easier time on it if it was at your level. Story missions or otherwise will also have a level cap to show you what is the best recommended level for that mission. Tip number eight. As you're playing the game, you will start seeing things called dark zones. Now, uh, if you're running around the map and you're trying to do activities, you're trying to unlock um, the windmills or anything else, you probably be running past these constantly. Now, I do recommend to attempt them during the day Oh, during the night, sorry, when it's empty. The game will stress this out to you a lot. And a lot of you might go in there during the day thinking it's safer. No, it's not. It's actually a lot more dangerous during the day. 
but if you're a higher level than the area you might be able to go in there and do it anyway uh, either or you'll still get a lot of loot and i recommend looting as often as you can tip number nine guys gre chests are relootable you can actually come back to the gre chest and reloot them now you cannot get inhibitors <laughs> again once you looted them the first time but i still recommend doing it because military medkits are probably still the best medkit in game so far and you can also still get equipment by relooting the gre chest now tip number 10 is very simple and i don't need to spend too much time on it some of the gre inhibitors are story locked so you will not be able to collect every single one maybe they'll address later on i doubt it i think they're always going to be story locked but yeah, just so you know, if you guys are trying to run around the map and you can't get into the building, it's probably because you're not able to get into that building just yet. Tip number 11, guys. Check the vendors as often as you can. Even if it's a vendor you already checked, uh, I still recommend hitting them up again because they always seem to be changing out inventory and they might have better weapons, possibly even a weapon that you're not even meant to have. And by what I mean by that, you could possibly run into a bow early in game, which would make your exploration a bit more uh, safer and also give you a lot more playability. So definitely recommend checking out those vendors when you get the chance tip number 12 do not skimp out on the lockpick i know it seems kind of counterintuitive some of you are like oh i can do everything with one level one lockpick if you upgrade your lockpicks they become way more useful um and this is actually very important while you're lockpicking you might go from your leveled up lockpick to a level one and then have like a lot more struggle trying to pick the lock than you should so one easy fix for that go to a vendor as quickly as possible then go to sell scroll all the way down you can see all my upgraded lock picks here but also on the same menu you will see your level one lock pick i highly recommend to sell your level one lock picks and just make and use the ones that you have tip number 13 military airdrops now these are the only crates that drop military tech I definitely recommend going back to them even at, even after you open them to get more military tech man that was a really good one actually but okay so not, they're not always this good but still in game they probably reset 30 minutes to an hour don't take my word for that i'm not sure i haven't tested that out but if you do log in after a while there will be reset and you can reclaim the military tech so definitely recommend doing that all right guys tip number 14 claimable weapons scale with your level now what i mean by that if you got the pre-air bonus you should have access to a saber called the hussar now if you're starting the game this debt weapon damage probably looks a lot different than mine that's because if you leave it in your stash or claim it at a later date the weapon levels up with you i believe that you can get another one if you claim it by accident so don't worry if your weapon has already broken or you already claimed it beforehand, you can probably get a new one once the weapon you currently have is deteriorated and destroyed. Tip number 15 is a bit of a spoiler, so I recommend if you don't want anything spoiled at all, you wanna do a full blind, blind playthrough, pause the video here and come back once you get further into the story. For those of you who do not mind this minor spoiler, at a certain point in the game, you will unlock the ability to fast travel. Now, I recommend once you unlock that ability is to go around and do as many as you can all, uh, all around the map because it will make maneuvering so much easier so you don't have to jump and run everywhere for those of you who are not used to the parkour just yet there's no shame in using the fast travel system all right tip number 16 guys so i recommend taking over the electrical stations and water towers you should know about this before i believe the metro station now i highly recommend taking these over first that way when you're traversing the area and doing activities and side missions the area becomes a faction controlled area now if you want to learn more about factions i can cover that on another video but just to put it simple in this video factions help the area out by giving you more maneuverability protection safety or just you know things to do sometimes in unlock side missions as well so take over the electrical stations and water towers as fast as you can or as early as it's possible. Tip number 17. So if you're playing the game for a while, you might have run into one to two of these before. You might actually walk by them thinking they're not anything, but in reality, they're actually a lot. And I'm surprised that the game doesn't bring up a tutorial for these. If you turn these generators off and when you're within an activity that has hostiles that are human, you can basically flood an area with zombies, making your job a lot easier. And also on the other side of the coin, you can turn these on if you're running into an area that has a lot of uh, darkness in it. Darkness affects your immunity, making you take 
a lot of damage if you don't have any immunity boosters on you or means to find UV light while you're in activity. So these can be your saving grace or a torture device depending on how you play the game. Tip number 18. I recommend putting some points into stamina early on because you're going to find out very quickly that some activities require you to have quite a bit of stamina to complete. I know for those of you who want to go melee or tank, this might feel counterintuitive, but trust me, you'll be able to balance it off, balance it out in the end or down the road, so don't worry about it. That way you can complete more activities, unlock more things to do on the map, and also give you more time to run away if you need to readjust, you know, overall help you in your combat. Tip number 19. Now this is more of a help with a game mechanic that's currently in game that isn't explained very well. It's called the stab ability that you can get via the combat skill tree. Now it says that you need a knife weapon in order to use it and you might think that means some type of bladed weapon. Unfortunately that's not the case. In order to use this ability you have to have throwing daggers in your inventory. Now if you took my advice earlier and bought all the blueprints you should also be upgrading your throwing daggers because you'll be able to craft a lot more of those and at a quicker pace with the upgrade. Further down the skill tree you'll be able to also take down one opponent and throw an additional dagger to take down another. So it's definitely worth it I would say. Tip number 20. Now I don't really have a clip for this so, but I do want to bring it up anyway is some quest lines will tell you to wait to continue. Now what that means is that the quest giver will contact you at a later date. Now if you want you can naturally wait by running around doing activities or anomalies and stuff like that uh, while you kill time. But if you don't have the time to do that or you just want to continue the quest right then and there my recommendation is quit out of the game come back in and the NPC should contact you right away. Tip number 21. Like I mentioned earlier about side missions, um, this one is more to do with reward. Now some missions will give you special weapons if you complete them. Now I don't have a list of which side missions or story missions do this, but I felt like it was worth bringing up that you could run into a unique weapon in the game by completing certain missions. I have this one highlighted because it shows you the rewards. In the middle, it uh, gives you strength, stamina, flowers, and honey. Uh, but there are missions that do it. I don't want to spoil any of those for you, so I just use this as an example. Tip number 22. So if you're playing the game, you're running around the map, you might see this pop out. You see the symbol there? Uh, the two arrows divided. Now when you run into a mission like that, side mission or story, that means that that mission contains a choice. Whatever you choose might either end the quest then and there and you can get your reward and leave or it can make the quest last a bit longer and you still will get a reward at the end. Just keep in mind that when you see that divided arrow that means that the choice has to be made and will determine how long a quest lasts or what the reward will be. Tip number 23. Some of the side missions you do when you're going around the map don't just have one part. Some carry up to three parts. Some side missions last up to nine parts. Some of them don't even activate until you progress further into the story. Just be ready that yes, some side missions do tend to carry on after completing the first part. Tip number 24. This does have to pertain to the story progression in the game. If you don't want any spoilers, I recommend pausing here. But this actually is a very important tip, so you should hear me out. So if you just started the game, you'll eventually run into a story mission called the Water Tower. Now my recommendation is to stop there and do the side missions first. The reason I say that is because the Water Tower mission changes the world map once it's progressed. So if you want to know better clarification or what I mean by that, check the description below and I'll tell you what the best outcome is for that mission. Those of you who already got past the mission and are already a little bit further, my recommendation is to stop on a mission called The Shoe. It is the best point of the game to take a step back and do the missions around the city and the activities to gain more levels, better gear, and basically work on your character a lot more. I just wanted to tell you guys that because if if you do certain things that some of the game will not tell you or warn you about uh, certain consequences that you'll face. So definitely this is very important to remember. All right, guys, now we're off on to the final tip of the video. So I'm super stoked. And this will be tip number 25. And I did briefly cover this in the gear set tip, but I do want to reinforce this is that the level of the armor, of the gear. You can see that I'm mix matching uh, gear because I'm trying to go for perks instead of level, but I do recommend if you have the possibility 
do equip the high level armor, especially if you're going to difficult areas or difficult activities. Uh, even if it's just temporary, equip the high level armor, If even if it doesn't go with your playstyle. I recommend experimenting, playing a little bit in a different playstyle with the high level armor, and then maybe grinding out the high level armor for the playstyle that you truly want to play. Because if you equip lower level gear and you go to a high level area, you won't have a good time. And that's it guys, that wraps up 25 essential tips on Dying Light 2. I had a lot of fun making this, hopefully this video helped you out and have a way more enjoyable experience in the game thanks for dropping by hope you guys enjoyed and like always i'll catch you guys on the next one